OK, well, welcome to Lecture 3. And what I want to do this morning is talk about social capital in health economics. Because what I was talking about on Friday afternoon was sort of social capital in general and some of the challenges in measuring it. You might wonder what this slide represents. Um, I don't know what you call this. I know you have them. Um, these markings on the road in Japan, but we call them zebra crossings. Um, you may have some equivalent. So what this picture says to me, and the relationship to this lecture, is clearly zebras came before zebra crossings because they would just be white lines in a road. If we didn't have something called zebras, we wouldn't be able to call these zebra crossings. So while that's true, it's also absolutely apparent this zebra is crossing this road here because there's a zebra crossing. So the zebra crossing, as it were, is uh, feeding into this zebra's behavior. Um, and so what this is trying to get at, if you think of social capital and health, while we tend to think about um, health might benefit or be an outcome, better health might be an outcome from more social capital, perhaps social capital um, can increase or decrease as a result of health or lack of health. Um, if you think of uh, individual's ability to participate in activities. More healthy, they have much more ability to participate. Uh, less healthy, it's harder to participate. So what this picture was trying to capture is the sort of two-way nature of the relationship between social capital and health. Now, this two-way nature is really important. Because if you just assume that everything goes from changing social capital to changes in health, you might then be a bit surprised when your policy changes social capital and you don't see the change in health you predicted. And you might not see the change you predict because you haven't allowed for the, perhaps the feedback. So there's a change in social capital which might change health, but that change in health itself may also feed back into social capital. That's, so that's why it's important. Um, in case you're wondering, this was a street in uh, Bergen in Norway. Um, very, a lovely city by the sea, famous in Europe for having the highest rainfall of any city. So while it's lovely, it's best when it's not raining. Uh, I should point out this was not a real zebra. You know, it's one of these ones where there's a person at the front and a person at the back. But what's rather nice is these people are barely acknowledging that a zebra is crossing the crossing in front of them. In front of them. Anyway, I, um, I was very pleased with myself to get my phone out in time and, <laughs> and snap that picture. But again, of course, I did it not realizing that I would be talking in, in Kyoto about social capital and health a few years later. Okay, so lecture three, that's, that's what we're, we're about today. The, the, the danger of all this is in about two weeks time, all you'll remember is something about zebras. <laughs> now, if you can remember the reason why zebras were introduced, great, it works as a, as a learning tool. But if all you remember is a zebra, it, it may not, <laughs> it's not so successful. Okay. Um, I think it's fair to say that health economists came relatively late to the party. They came late to the party. Other people, sociologists, political scientists and others, were, were a bit more active in, in thinking about social capital and in thinking about particularly relationships with health. Uh, but health economists, um, perhaps about 12 years ago, began to get interested in these potential relationships. 
I think it would be fair to summarize the contribution, not that it's huge, but to summarize the contribution of health economics uh, in this area in, in two ways. One, health economists and economists in general have tended to be much more interested in underlying theory and then they go from the theory to testing some sort of empirical relationships. Uh, in much of the social capital literature, people seem to jump quite quickly to the empirical work and quite quickly to looking at how different indicators move together and things like that. They don't always spend much time on, on what the underlying theory might be. Whereas I think it's fair to say health economists tend to be a little bit more interested in that aspect. Um, what are the mechanisms that we think are at work? So if social capital is related to health or health is related to social capital, what are the mechanisms that lead a change in one of these to influence the other? So that's been an area of interest and in contribution of health economists. And related to this, I think it's fair to say that health economists are probably a bit more interested in causation than association. Now, that distinction is really important. Uh, having said that, as we'll come on to, it's always very difficult to establish whether a relationship is causal rather than simply an association. But that's been a theme of the work um, of health economists, I would say. Not just health economists, but that's, been a, that's a way of characterising, I think, what health economists um, have focused on. 